Good morning, this is Bob, and we picked up a uh, BC-453 World War II beacon receiver at the Fort Wayne Ham Fest. Got it real cheap, it was 10 bucks, and uh, started to work on it here, and I wanted to show you a few things here. It's uh, a new project. Got about an inch of new snow on the ground, and... Uh, so I'm staying inside today. Uh, this is the front panel of it, of course. I put an F connector here to make connection. I had the complete front panel off. The front panel was bent very badly. So I had to drill out the rivets here and 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 here. And there's two more over here to get that front panel off. And I got that off, then I straightened the front panel out, then I cleaned it with a Brillo pad in the wash tub, and uh, put it back together. Uh, the gentleman that had this before me broke the uh, thread-on fitting here, so you couldn't use the standard knob. But I took the center piece out of, a, uh, out of another knob with set screws on it, you can see the set screw there, and uh, I, that has uh, two sets of uh, threaded holes in it. I threaded another hole in that bushing that I took out of a knob. I put a piece of one quarter inch uh, copper tubing in there and uh, put it on this side and the other one just clamps onto that spline shaft. So that's my tuning. I ran into some really funny things here with this. This is a spring and it keeps tension onto the variable capacitor. 71 year old spring and it had uh, it had lost its tension so I took these four out the spring lifts right off you can lay it on its side there and then you just take your fingers and you bend these up so that when you put them on they put more tension on there. Also on this unit you will notice Right here, that's a little nut. I'm using a uh, close-up lens on this camera, so. And there's a little nut down there. See that down there and up here? Those center the plates on this variable capacitor. Up in there is a glass bead, and when you tighten that little nut up it pushes the glass bead in which moves those over these were shorted on this so I had to go to all three of them and there are two of these that are down inside here this is a uh, ignition wrench I've got here and you can work in there and you can tighten those and center those up that got that going then I put some regular automotive chassis grease on the gears and got everything working smooth oiled things up then I started changing capacitors. You can see all these orange drops I've installed. I didn't pay very much for those. I bought those at a ham fest. They were factory seconds. You see the rough finish on this one here? And this one here, these were factory seconds and the guy had a big bag of them. A uh, big bag. There's about 25 of them in the bag. And uh, luckily, a lot of them were 0 .05 and 0 .047, and some of these here are supposed to be 0 .05, but I put 0 .07s in there, 0 .047s in there, and replaced these guys. There's a mess of them. And uh, I wanted to show you here, these things are uh, wax capacitors made with beeswax, and after 71 years, the beeswax has deteriorated and they have uh, become actually resistors. Uh, this one here, if you measure it, reads about 20,000 ohms. So these, I, I've, I've checked these all with my Simpson meter. I tell you, I really like the Simpson meter. I think it's the best meter made. And for checking things like this, I much prefer an analog meter over a uh, over a uh, digital meter. 
Now I've got a brand new 0 .047 capacitor here on the on the table, and uh, I'm going to show you what a good capacitor should check like. Now there's the Simpson meter. Now I'm going to connect the capacitor and watch the needle. That little bitty bump. That's all I got. I've got it on R times 10,000. So it made that little tiny bump and then it went up to infinity. That's a good capacitor. Now if I put any of these other ones on there, you're going to see it's going to be very difficult for me to do that with this camera handheld. But I'm telling you, this one here meets 20,000 ohms. Uh, several of them read 100,000 ohms. And so uh, they are no longer capacitors, they're resistors. So if you get one of these uh, surplus units, the 453 or the others, that have this type of capacitor in them, take them out and change them. Don't even bother to check them. Uh, they are going to be bad. So those are all changed. There's, uh, I think, 17 of them in there I changed. This one down here, this is a choke coil, and it's okay. Uh, this is the uh, this is a choke coil for the power supply. This is a choke coil for the power supply. This is a uh, output transformer. I drew the schematic on there. This is the BFO. The other thing I ran into, and I'll cover it really quickly, is that these these little screws and things on here. A lot of them have lost their connection for ground. And I ran into this here, this one here, and this one here. This is the ground connection here for the power supply or dynamotor. I'm going to put the power in there from a power transformer. But I read this, it was, it was not making contact at all. And that goes through these little riveted nuts called riv nuts or rivet nuts there there there's one here there's one here those a lot of them I found are not making contact with the chassis and they are used as grounds inside so you've got to get inside there find out which ones are used as grounds and run ground wires to other points so that they're grounded also these IF transformers the way they're mounted on these little screws is on these little riv nuts and some of these IF transformers I found two of them were not making contact with ground and if that's the case then it's not a shield anymore it becomes like an antenna picking up the signal from the others and you got an oscillator so those all have to be done I have to go in there I'm going to put little ground lugs on here I'm going to put a ground terminal on here and run a wire for each one and ground each one yeah yeah it's a lot of work it's a lot of work so that's what we're doing here. It's fun. I like to work on things. So that's what I like to do. And uh, I have fun doing it. So that's it, guys, for today on the BC 453 Segment 1. 73s and good DX.